With Reiki, it's a Japanese art, and it's based on Christianity and a degree of Buddhism. It's the longest standing art out there and the widest accepted throughout the world. There's many others, quantum touch, quantum healing, healing touch, reconnective healing, vortex healing. You could go on, tons of them. It just so happens that I've chosen Reiki as my art to be sharing that with you today. With the energy healing, we're looking at facilitating the healing within the body, although there's no such thing as a healer per se, because we're looking for the body to heal itself, we can be a conduit in support of allowing the energy to flow. In the beautiful language of English, when you split up the word disease, dis-ease, we have dis-ease in the body. So when there's a lacking of harmony and it's built up with stress, the body can manifest disease. So in turn, what Reiki does, it creates a stress-free environment. So that's what we're looking for, stress-free. When you become Reiki attuned, you enhance your energy. So if you've got that natural energy field, you enhance it with an attunement of Reiki 1, tenfold, Reiki 2, 100. When you get to a Reiki master level, thousandfold. And it can go all the way up to Karuna Reiki and beyond. So what you're doing is, instead of utilizing your own energy where you could get tired, you're bringing in the universes. It's infinite. So it's not like you can just have one request a day to say, I've got one horse, I'd like to try that, and now I've used my quota. Luckily, we can have it as often as we want. Reiki comes in for the benefit and the healing of the animals. In 1997, I became attuned. I did my Reiki Masters about 2003, and you give a little bit of time in between so that your life can follow because you change things. You actually heighten your vibrational frequency and it changes things. So if you're looking to become an animal communicator, Reiki supports you. If you're looking at following your dream and your passion, Reiki will push you. And so you're looking to change the way you see the world, Reiki does that. The beautiful thing by taking it to the horses, they will show you exactly what the energy healing does with great joy. So cats, jump on your lap, they'll take the Reiki, they'll leave when they're done. They're very clear, serve me, now I'm done. The dogs love it, they go to sleep. The horses will show registers. So they're here, they're here upon request, where we ask for a few horses to come here. They may not even know what class they're entering. So we always ask permission for the animals, for them to realize that you're here, but let's support you. Do you really want to be here? Do you want to receive Reiki? And there can't be any ego involved from this lot because it's not personal if they were to say no to some of the people and yes to others. It's just a blend of energy that the horse may choose. They may say, you've got motherly energy, we'll be with you, or you've got very strong direct energy, we'll be with you. They can choose. So we always ask the horses if they would like to receive the energy. We'll have different levels of individuals back there that practice it daily or occasionally. We'll have Reiki 1 and Reiki 2 attuned people and a Reiki master. So the energy will shift with each one. And the glory of a class like this, you can see different people working with horses and you're gonna have them behind me doing different things. So what I would love to start with, actually, because you're here, if you want to step forward with your horse. And we'll look at a few things. What's your name? Nicole, and what's your horse's name? Deuce. Deuce, hello, Deuce. And Deuce is male, just checking. I love to start with that mutual respect so that he knows I've got him by the right name and so on. So when we get involved with Deuce, who looks exceedingly relaxed, which is nice, we can bring in the energy healing for many different levels or reasons. It could be simply because Deuce wants to receive it. It could be for physical reasons, if he had physical discomfort. Emotional, spiritual, mental, whatever Deuce would want. We don't have to ask the person to say, why are we doing this? We could, we don't have to. And Reiki has its own intelligence, so it goes where it's needed. 
You don't have to know the anatomy of the horse. It's beneficial if I were to say to her, I actually found an area in the hock. It's nice to know the name of the hock. It's not beneficial. So if we've got non-horse people here, you could say back here is where I was drawn. But it's nice to come out and go, okay, his heart chakra was closed, voice chakra was closed, we worked on those, and it opened, and you have a degree of terminology. I've got a number of tools here to support us with the Reiki today, and I also brought some oils in, which we haven't done in the last couple of days. And oils can enhance what you're doing. So for example, if we had a horse a little bit depressed, we could bring in an oil called Joy and we could see if that would support them. Well, I've got a number of oils here. And instead of us assuming to look at him and assuming, we're gonna offer the oils to him. Now, it's not staged, you're seeing live sessions. So I don't even know if he'll like them. So if he doesn't like them, he'll let us know. And if he does like them, he'll let us know too. And we would choose an oil that can support the session. So it'd be fun for you to see. You could muscle test for the oils, kinesiology. You could utilize your pendulum for the oils. You go one by one if you want to come on this side. And in fact, we can open them up and just let Deuce have a look at them to see if he would want that oil or not. And you're gonna gauge, if you can see, you're gonna gauge, he's not turning away. Oops, good start. We try for them not to necessarily touch them. Seems to like joy though. Yeah, we like that one. Okay, Elaine, if you come over here. And t no, you're good. You're good. Oh. And um, we're going to go through all of them. I want you to see the re That's responses. Yes. That's pretty much a yes. Because I want to gauge the response. I may not know. Just need to. This one's my favorite oil. You like that one? He likes that one too. Oh, he likes this one more. That's good. We're on the same page. Okay. This one, let's see. I'll tell you what it is after one. That was was magnify your purpose. I want you guys to see a no as well, so he doesn't just show you a ton of yeses. This one is less engaged, so I've got to learn his language, and his language may be very subtle. So his language could be that he touches on a yes and he just stands there for a no. So we've got to gauge this. Oh, this is a beautiful oil. Let's see what he does to this one. Same as magnify your purpose. This is hope. He's staying there. So what we don't want to do is shove it on their nose that they can't get away from it. You really want to sort of offer it there's your no. Yeah, that one he's not engaging with. This is Thieves, immune system. So Looks like he's not, not looking for this. This one would be an interesting one too. He's already looked away, that's fantastic. But it's a good one if he doesn't want it. <laughs> I can go up there a little bit more. See, he's not engaged. Great oil for the digestive system. And to balance it, this is Digize, if you know the oils. No for that one too. So now you're seeing how he says yes and no. We've got the first two. Now we could go through all of them. We've got magnify your purpose and joy that he reached out to and touched. We can try a few different horses so that you see different responses to them. But that allows us to bring in the oil. Now how would you do that? You don't necessarily put it at the top lip because he can't get away from it. So you could put it on your wrist because we're looking at Reiki. So we could put it on our wrists and when you put the hands on, we've got the flow of the oil as well. We could, if we got drawn to a certain chakra, put the oil and just drop it on that chakra. There's another option. You could put it here behind the fetlocks if you felt that it would support them there, especially a grounding oil. The feet will help them ground. So these are some options. Now, with Deuce, let's allocate uh, one of the three ladies back there, Sherry, if any one of you want to work with Deuce, and you would work with either Magnify Your Purpose or Joy, and once you start, we'll see how you two fare, okay, with Deuce, okay? And then I will comment as we go along. So what she will do, Sherry will ask permission. Many ways, you could simply ask permission where you open your heart and you open the flow of the energy and offer and see what he does with the energy healing. That's permission. You could ask with what's called a sway test, which is kinesiology where you go to Deuce, you literally say, in your mind's eye, Deuce, would you like to receive Reiki energy healing from me? If you sway forward, it's a yes. If you sway back, it's a no. We're going to Deuce's higher self to say, would you like to receive energy healing? If she sways forward, she's being drawn towards Deuce. If she sways back, he's saying no. That's how we ask permission energetically versus physically watching the individual. 
We don't want to interfere with the halter too much. And so what happens with energy healing, we're looking for them to show their true colors, their true self. So if we hold too tight, we're influencing and affecting them. So we give them a little bit of a lead rope. And for the purposes of today, we've all got halters on for safety. We then look at if we're going for hands on or hands off. In his case right now, Show's got hands off. And a lot of these horses will prefer hands on. They like the touch. And we've got enough of them to explore for you guys so that you get an opportunity. You begin to look at the different relaxation signs. So we call them Reiki registers. A Reiki register could be that he's rested the hind leg. So we're looking at what's he doing during the, the energy healing session. We've got a resting of the hind leg. Look at those eyes. They've softened. He's kind of glazed a little bit. He's gone very relaxed. The mouth is relaxed, not tight. Head carriage is a little bit lower. He's moved his head towards Sherry. He's listening still, but he's not got the head high. In the last couple of days, we had a few horses, head really high, couldn't relax into it too much, and stayed alert, not in his case. Laura's hand went onto the withers. You're gonna put that just a tad further back, which would be the heart chakra. So at the lower part of the withers, that's the heart chakra. And each chakra is an energy source, wheel of light. We're looking for them to be open, that's simple. Just open. If it's closed, it's like a hose. Imagine the hose being squished, technical term, and then the water won't come out flowing. So we want it to be nice and open so the energy's moving, flowing. So we looked to see where does he accept the hands being placed? Does he want them on? Does he want them off? If he wants them off, he's going to tell you, and you're going to see a few other horses. If he wants them on, he stay relaxed. Sherry has her one, two hands. She's doing a double hand boost, two hands together, and you strengthen energy that way. This, you'll have less than two hands together. So both hands are together. That will allow the double amount of energy to flow. Underneath here is the throat chakra. Same as with you guys, the throat chakra. And if that were to be closed, it can indicate that the horses don't have a voice, aren't speaking their truth, feel unheard. So we look to support them to be in a position to change that energy flow so they feel they can have a voice. It doesn't mean that his is closed. It means that we never checked them because we didn't bring the pendulum out, but they're feeling drawn towards these hand positions. So the one that Laura's chosen to, she's got the heart chakra, which is at the bottom of the, the withers, and she's got sort of the sacral, it would go tad back. There's a little divot in their butts, and that's where the sacral chakra is. So we're gonna bring in, um, let's bring the Palomino in if we may, and we're gonna do the same with the oils, and you're gonna start watching multiple horses. And what's his name? Sunny. Sunny, what's your name? Maddie. Maddie, oh, that's right, I think. I had a Maddie earlier, hey Sunny. So I'd love to do the same with him where we check some oils and we can see if we can incorporate them in. White Angelica is a nice one. Actually, it's a healing oil. We bring in the body language, so we don't exclude that. Back of the hand for a hello is really nice. He seems quite engaged already. And he can become involved in this. I want to make sure you guys can see. And then <laughs> checking in with her, did you like that? Didn't like, no. It was sort of a, and then he checked in with her to see probably by touching her, is it okay? Oh, that's a nice oil, which one's that? We like that one. Oh, we went back to that one. Do we want that one involved? Quite likes Hope. Okay. Yes. We'll keep Hope, we'll keep going with a couple of others. Let's have a look at what we have in here. This one would be interesting. Let's see what he says about this one. Trauma life, great oil if they've gone through trauma in any way to help them get through it. In his case, really wasn't that interested in that one. You saw the difference, he stayed with the others. Can you come back? Let's see about this one. Nope. So he's smelling it and moving on. Common sense, he obviously feels it is very grounded. Let's see if this one applies. He's so sweet. No, big no on that one. That's grounding, obviously feels he's grounded enough. One of my favorite oils is this one. I'd go, no. The first one where he came forward three times, whichever that one was, seems to be his oil of choice. We've probably got other oils too, but he likes the hope. So 
we're going to allocate a lane to him and we'll do the same thing where we're asking permission because they've come here because their legal guardians have brought them. And we want to make sure he's content with our suggestion and idea with the Reiki. In this case, Elaine, if you can take out your pendulum as well, and we're going to check some chakras because some of you wouldn't have seen that before. So as she prepares with putting the arm on the wrist so that he's already inhaled it, so it's already enhancing things, got things activated anyway, we'll then bring out the pendulum. I have two pendulums in my pocket. And you choose the one that speaks to you the most, be it the crystals or be it the animal totem. So as an animal communicator, there'll be certain energies that can support and enhance you as you're doing Reiki. This is the horse pendulum, horse at the top, panther. And these were two that I carry. There's more than we have. We have 12, but these are two good ones that speak to me. Horse energy would be balanced, going forward with grace and ease. Panther is about, in this case, is about protection. So there's the two. And you would decide which one speaks to you the most. There's 12 all in. We've got whale, we've got dolphin, dog, a number of them. And each one has a different energy. When it comes to utilizing a pendulum, and you'll see Elaine do this. With the horses, you could either put the pendulum right over the head, but when they're a little bit bigger, it's not the way to go if they're high head carriage, etc. But also, you could just put your hand on them. So we start from this way backwards. So for the energy healers here, we don't start on the first chakra, which is the root. We start on the last because it's safer. We're dealing with big horses. And you're not exempt from horse behavior. So if they turned around and said, I don't know you, I'm going to kick you, we don't start at the backside. We start here, and we make our way back so it's safe. We also start at the head for another reason, because you see them really go soft and they relax into it. So that you really create that relaxation. And if you've ever been on a table for energy healing, you love it when the energy healer has the hands around your head because it stops the mind from going. And so we're doing the same principle here. We're allowing them to settle in as flight animals, little aware here to settle in. His eyes have softened. So when we check these chakras, you're seeing Elaine go from one to the other. We start at the crown, go to the brow, go to the throat, go to the heart, the solar plexus, sacral to the root. That's what she's doing back here. Didn't want the head. I was fine with throat and back, but he didn't want me on the head. Try again. Just ask him again. See if he's ready. Because sometimes it's a one-time thing. So it's nice to ask once, maybe twice. On the third time, really take it as a no. So in his case, he maybe just said, hang on. Don't want my head touched, but he's quite comfortable with it now. What we look for, if I were to check my own chakras, for example, and I'm just going to think about them. So here would be the crown. You can look at this now. Watch this. So I'm going to think of mine, and I want it to register mine. You look very closely because you can see my wrist as well. And I'm not going to jump start that. So I'm not doing this to jump start it. It will start itself. There's the crown chakra. The reason you want to know is you want to know how, how the energy is flowing. We go from the brow. Now, as soon as I mention the word brow, it's going to go into neutral. And when I was say to it, so I'm sharing with it, I'm looking for the brow chakra, it's going to go round. We're looking for it to go clockwise. When it goes clockwise, we want equilibrium between the size and hopefully the shape too. We go from the brow to the throat chakra. You see it going into neutral. You're not going to see any hand motion. And then we're looking at the throat. I would hope to think my throat chakra is open that I'm speaking my truth. We go from the throat to the heart. Always interesting to see, especially if I'm off on the road and I'm touring. It's nice to see how open this is. We go from the heart to the solar plexus. That would be your ego and different emotions. From the solar plexus, we go to the sacral chakra. I can show you where the sacral is in a minute. Let's have a look at that. That looks a bit smaller. Hmm, okay. We go from the sacral chakra to the root chakra. There we go. So that would be from here to here to here to here, there, sacral root. Now, if you've never done it before, it looks very esoteric because you're thinking, how can that thing move when she's not even touching any part of her body? So you would. You'd start with touching so that you feel it's more tangible and more believable for you. 
until you learn to trust the pendulum. What it shows you is what's going on in your life, an energetic imbalance. So we want it to be equal, we want it to be good. And the Reiki can help balance you. So in his case, I mean, he's just loving it here. In his case too, he relaxed into it. And I wouldn't expect them not to look around if there's a horse moving, etc. And we're going here using the heart position with Elaine, heart to heart, and then the throat is at the top of the withers. So we're looking to keep the hands there until they share with us to move the hands. That's where the language of the horse comes in. If they don't show or indicate moving, keep your hands exactly where they're supposed to be. They will move you. Now in his case, he's so subtle and going to sleep with it, I'm not quite sure when he'd move them or indeed how. Some of the horses are very bold. They will bite, they'll move, they'll even kick. They'll do very bold moves to get off, move on. He's not, he's just soaking this up. So it's like we've got two statues standing here. So you would keep watching and you're looking for signs, subtle signs to see when they're asking for the hands to be moved. But you're also looking for the registers, i.e. relaxation signs, blinking, softening of the eye, softening of the eye. It's good if they close, half close it. Nice. You know it looks like he's nodding off to sleep and then he wakes himself up. So half eye shut good, fully. We want to be mindful that he's, he's sleeping. He's really just nodding off there a little bit. He's got a nice soft mouth, same over here, soft eye, soft mouth. He's cocked his hind leg in a relaxation position where he's dropped the hip a little bit, so that's a good thing. And we just stay there, and you truly become the conduit where the energy's flowing through you, and it's not yours. So when we bring in the pendulum, it's kind of nice because it can back up your intuition. Intuitively, if you feel like there's a chakra closed, check it. Check it with the pendulum. If you feel like you want to finish the session, check it with the pendulum to see if they're all open or what's happened since the energy's moved. You're not attached to the outcome. So we're not looking there. He's the first time he's done that. Very deliberate. And it's so funny, he actually pulled the face with it. He didn't just look back and move, kind of went like that. There's your licking and chewing, seen as a release and relaxation. And sometimes you see horses lick and chew 50, 60 times, and it may be that they yawn an awful lot too. It's showing processing, it's showing releasing. He hasn't said he's finished. So although he's looked back and didn't look this side, looked the other way, looked back, pulled a face, and just stepped to one side, he may say, I need a moment to process. How do you know that's what he's saying? Because you put your hands on. And if he readily accepts it again, we're fine. And if he doesn't, he's saying he's finished. But just like any other horsemanship, you're looking to ask the question so that you know. You could bring in the sway test as well to see if he's done. I don't think he's done. I think he'd move away if he were done. So we will continue here. Grace, I'd love to show love lessons if you'd like to bring one of these guys in of your choice. Oops. Mike just went there. Bring somebody of your choice and you'll bring them forward. Okay. And we'll see. And what's your horse's name? Coletti. Say that again? Coletti. Coletti, okay. What's your name? All right. So here's our next one. This is Grace, she's a Reiki master. She's actually done Reiki for horses with me over 15 times. So I teach it multiple times a year. Grace signs up for every class. She's been to the Bitterroot Ranch in Wyoming. She's been to, um, she's been to Happy Dog, to Zoomers, to Colorado Horse Rescue, to Cody, Wyoming, and Arizona, and many other places doing Reiki for horses. Because you always learn something. And it changes if we're in a rescue situation versus if we're at a dude ranch. Everything shifts a bit. And they'll always teach you that little bit more or something else you need to know. So Grace's energy will be slightly different from everybody else and she's got a lot of experience with it. She can combine things, she's also got healing touch in there. So she can bind the energy or she can differentiate if she's able to do that. I've never been able to differentiate. I just run energy. So the one I wanted to show you, which is an easy one to take home, 
I coined love lessons years ago, heart-to-heart -heart connection love lessons. And the reason it's called that is because that the left hand's on the heart chakra, right hand's on the heart chakra. Now, it's one of the most powerful positions you'll do because you're going straight to the heart. But it's also one where they may say no. They could say no if they don't feel they need that heart-to-heart -heart connection, if they feel they're already connected. They could say no if the person didn't ask if you could do heart-to-heart. -heart. They may say no because the energy is simply too strong. They may not be ready for it. So we're looking to what's called peel away the layers so they get comfy with the energy. And we'll look at if he does, if not, she'll move that left hand to the brachial chakra, one we haven't talked about. The scapula on the horse is the brachial chakra. It's a little less invasive, kind of a smooth one. You put the hand on the shoulder. And you can certainly start there. And any time you move hands, you're asking permission if you can go to the next place. And what that means is we don't go from A to B. We slide our hand. And as we're sliding the hand, we're asking permission. Is it okay for my hand to go here? And you'll see that on all of these horses, that they'll move, the people will move the hands. He's gonna disrupt that session, that's funny. Look, you're gonna see him scold him. Uh, you see that, they go, get off. These are my Reiki angels, don't disturb my session. And you, people will often say, my horse has never done that before, because they truly say, this is my session, he's gonna do it again, get off, this is my session. And Grace, if he does it a third, or she does it the third time, will move her, just because he's getting a little upset that his session's being broken. And you see behavior that you wouldn't see. These horses are standing outside quite comfortably next to each other, not pinning the ears. But he's definitely found his place, he's loving it and didn't want this one to go, come on, let's go. It's like, get away. So you're seeing behavior between horses, which is terrific. So when we move our hands, and a lot of these guys are soaking it up, we glide it so we're asking, may we come in there? The no is clear. They're gonna look back. They're going to touch you. They're gonna move away. They're gonna say, not there. So you're looking to see if this horse wants Reiki, where does she want it and how does she want it? Does she want the hands on? Does she want light touch? Does she want what's called beaming? So you're just sending the energy that way. You're exploring what style you want and how long it's there for. You may have become familiar with keeping hands there a certain duration. We're not looking for that. We're looking for their interaction and involvement. What would they like? And how long would they like it for? She looks a little more comfy with that positioning. She's gone pretty much for the brachial chakra in the heart and just a slightly different positioning from Grace. They can do no wrong, so the horses can't do it wrong. You don't scold them. You're literally reading them to see how do they like it. So on times we've got some classes, I've got one at Bittery Ranch in June, and it's beautiful, 100,000 acres, 150, 200 head of horses, dude ranch horses, have a fantastic lifestyle. And we come in when we facilitate Reiki. And when we go in the corral, at first they think we're the wranglers. So you see them go, oh, okay, let's move. And everybody opens their hearts and their hands, and the horses change, and they go, Reiki angels are here. And you see them coming up in a conveyor belt, and they line up for it. And we have what's called, I call it uh, Reiki junkies. Well, you'll get one like this, who just say, I want to keep the people, I just soak up the Reiki. And it's beautiful to see that where they've got nothing on their heads, and they just embrace it, and truly suck, suck it in. And you would decide, generally speaking, we make the commitment that it will go as long as they need. Naturally, in this kind of environment, we may be able, can't do it here today, but I'm sure my friends and students would volunteer to go back. So that if, if he wants more and more, that we do stick to our commitment, which is if we have to cut it off early due to time, that we do go back and say, maybe we can find a time that works for you ladies, that they can come back and have more. 
And that's a nice way, instead of going, okay, time's up, 60 minutes, you've had your shot, sorry about that, come back. Actually, we won't come back, we'll just leave you like that. We actually say, we'll be back, because they like it. All right, so let's have a look here, we've got two more. We haven't got any of them giving it up, have we? So let's bring you forward, if you might keep you there, Grace. Okay, so from our audience, we had at least two, three hands coming up, didn't we? If we bring your horse just here in front of everybody else. So who raised their hands again, remind me? Who was an energy healer? You are, aren't you? That's right. And you are. Let's bring the two of you in then. And what's his name? Chester. Chester. And let's see if Chester is up for this. We have another horse, if he's not. I'm not sure, because he's moving away. So let's see, if he, if he gives us a no, it's okay. We won't force it. What we don't do is chase him down. If you go to YouTube, you're gonna see some of my students at different places, it's kind of cute. There's a blind horse in Arizona, and you literally see me with the YouTube video following, going, at some point my students will know he's saying no, as he's running across the facility, looking back, blind, going, get off of me. And the students are going like this, I wanna give you Reiki. And it's the cutest thing, because they go, you're blind, you need it. And he's going, oh, I don't want it. And he nearly ran into a fence line, because he's blind. But it, we have to learn somehow. We have to learn what a no is. And at first you might think he just is running because he doesn't want to be caught. So it was, it was good for them to try it, but it was also a clear no. Chester's settled in over there. So maybe he didn't know why he was standing there, didn't like the front row here, not sure, but he's definitely settled in. And he's gotten a little softer and he can, he can touch these guys a little bit. And so we've now got four of them. We've got our Reiki junkie just here, eyes are shut. Doesn't even care that Chester was moving, just soaking it up, going it's all about me and my energy, so that's fantastic. We've got a beautiful piece here, if you look at Grace. That's a classic sign from a horse receiving energy healing, leaning into the left. So you can see the weight's not straight, leaning into the left. They really lean into the hands and enjoy it. And she's very expressive when she's moving away to say, okay, that was good, and let's move. So keep watching these guys because there's different things going on. And it's fun. It's fun to learn it. So although I'm giving you a lot of advice as to what to put together, it's not until you put your hands on the horses that you learn. You learn what's a no, what's a yes, what's a Reiki register, how long you need to be there, and what you can incorporate, oils or otherwise. We have a dynamite spray that I bring in, release, which is fantastic. We didn't use it on anybody today, but we can spray it on the bodies and the release spray takes out muscle, tens muscle tension and it allows everything to be released energetically too. And I believe it does about a third of the work for an energy healer. So where Reiki goes where it's supposed to and it's needed, the release spray releases blocks in order for it to find it sooner. So that's kind of nice. Okay, so we have a few things going on. Chester's very expressive with where he wants hands and where he doesn't. So how we can find out if they're finished. So obvious with her, she moves away, she lets us know very clearly, and she'd probably walk out of the whole session when she's done. And he's a little different. You can certainly ask with the sway test, would you like to receive more healing and get that? You can ask with the pendulum. You can check the chakras with the pendulum. And you've got a choice. You can close with what's known as a bladder sweep, kind of closes, seals the session, takes the debris away, or you can leave it. It's not like it has to be a script of this is the ABC. You look at what the horse needs and how it feels right to you or intuitively to you. So if he's finished, that's fabulous. So I checked in with me and I got sway test though and I double checked with the pendulum. So I'm just holding space. Okay. okay, so Sherry's saying she double checked. She checked with the sway test, got a no, so no more Reiki. She checked with the pendulum, no more Reiki. And this is a fascinating piece she brought in. If you ever get a chance to receive energy healing on a table, like massage table, and multiple people are working on you, 
If one says they're finished and they retreat, some people feel abandoned by the energy leaving. I'm one of them. I can feel the person leaving and it feels very incomplete and a little bit like abandonment. So I ask my Reiki practitioners to stay and hold space. And that allows the energy to be sealed and staying. So although you're no longer needed, you hold space. Reverse is leaving. So when Sherry says that to you, she's saying she's holding space in order for this full session to maybe be completed. So she can open her hands and often we can guide it from the nose to the tail to hold the space that way. What we do need to do is begin to find a good place to finish. And because we're bringing in communication, love to see that over here. Chester's gone from, let me walk through all of you, to I'll move out of your way so you can see him. With his nose really down to the ground, beautifully soft eye, there's your licking and chewing, rested hind left leg. Often we're sound, we hear the sound of gurgling, so all horses gurgle the tummies, it's a good sign, but you'll hear more. What you may know, beautiful yawning here, eye rolling, as Grace is closing, and she's doing a little bit of a sweep back there. And you've got the licking and chewing too, and they look glazed over, right? And that's kind of a nice place. So what we wouldn't want, and I'm hoping I probably didn't preface it for these girls, what you really wouldn't want to do is now take them in to a drill team. <laughs> you can see it, right? I didn't even preface that. They're gonna be like, hey dude, Drill team, or oh, you know, you're gonna snap them out of it. It's like you guys coming off with the table with a massage, going, Really? Don't really care right now. What sort of cool work? No, oh, this is good, man. So you can see that from these guys. I'm, I know you're smiling, just gonna pray that you're not going into a drill team right now. They're gonna be drugged out for a bit. So it doesn't mean we can't pick them up, but be kind on them, be a little bit gentle, maybe realize that they're zenned out somewhat and uh, they may be a little different today than they have been. It's a good way. So you wouldn't want to do Reiki on a racehorse on the day of the race, okay? They need a huge ego to race where they're going, I'm coming, let me go, back off. They don't really want to go, go hey, oh yeah, go by me. I'm not stretching out today, I'm feeling good. So be mindful of that. Practitioners don't realize it. You need to see how your horse responds to Reiki before you do it on a day of a competition. You could pet them up, but you could zen them out. So that's really important not to just try it, because you could lose a $10,000 pocket, and it's on you, because you've zen them out. So there's times not to do it, probably under the influence of drugs and alcohol, don't do it. And also, if they're competing, be mindful of that. There's other times not to do it too. But generally speaking, you'll be okay. So if we have horses still wanting the energy back here, I'd ask our people to make arrangements to see you, because it looks like your guy loves it. And if everybody, a nice stretch over here. Oh, did you see this one? You needed that one. There's a finish where the horse went from Zen now to walking around fast. If you question any of this, keep watching. You won't question it anymore. So you've got a horse finished here. So a few things I want to end with from our standpoint. We do have the booth, I teach Reiki. I bring it into all of my horsemanship, from gentling the orphan foals, giving them Reiki. So when we say that we're natural horse people, we are. I'm looking at natural hoof care. I, I do the dynamite for the dynamite supplements, natural supplements. We're looking at energy healing to help the Mustangs integrate when they're taken off the range. We're not just, we certainly wouldn't put ropes on them or shoots for the Mustangs. We bring in Reiki. We bring in dynamite, relax and release. We bring in all of this when we gentle the wild ones. So it's an integration. If you're interested in learning it, I usually teach it four times a year. Unfortunately, fortunately, the way you look at it, one is in the UK in May, one's at the Bitterroot Ranch in June, ranch retreat, and it's on the calendar now. It will be in Elizabeth, Colorado in December. So it's when my season's over versus when I've got a full season. 
We bring it to you first. You have to be Reiki attuned. It's not like many other arts. There's an attunement involved. Other arts, you learn hand positions. This one's an attunement. So you get an attunement from a Reiki master. You can get that from anybody that resonates with you. The piece that I really specialize in would be the horses, because I'm a horse whisperer. So you're getting it from somebody that's had 35 years of horse experience, showing you how to read the animal and truly facilitate a healing session. There's a DVD I brought out, I brought it down, it's purple. We've got 30% off the DVDs. It's a two hour piece showing the chakras, chakra bouncing, hand positions, Reiki grooming, bladder sweep, team Reiki, and an awful lot more. So if you're interested in energy healing, you don't have to be a Reiki person to get the DVD. The whole idea was to show people the movement to get, honestly, get the love and light out there, to take it out there that you get interested in learning it. So you don't have to be a practitioner to buy it, but you do have to get attuned in Reiki if you want to actually do Reiki versus other healing arts. If you have questions, I'll be available in just a moment. I'll come out. And if not, we'll be at the booth. 13, I think I'd know by now. 1323 is the booth. And we'd love to help you up there. We've got the pendulums, the DVDs, and more things to support you on your journey. So we we don't need to clap. Just don't clap. I'm not thinking of me. Don't clap for them yet because they look really chilled. So you can smile and thank them. And we will see you maybe later on today. Thank you.